Well, what's up guys? My name is Willie G. I'm going to be profiling some of my Dark World build. Um, I've changed it up a little bit since my last profile of it, but I think it's a little bit more consistent now. I did take out the Farfa. I might end up siding it. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do my sideboard, but I like how the main deck is right now. It's very consistent. It's very strong. Um, I opted to not play the version with uh, Cards Into the Void because I like Trans Archfiend a lot. Like he is, he is my bread and butter card because the Field Spell and Trans Archfiend can win you games just by them own. So that's enough of me like explaining what I did differently. I'm just gonna go ahead and get into my deck. So I fight against this Necros player first. He opens up really bad. Like, he opens up all three mirrors, but he obviously doesn't have a level 3 target that he really wants to use. He has no level 3 target he can use. So, uh, Klausus is dead in his hand. Um, if he had opened up Unicorn, like, his, his play would have been a, a lot stronger, first off. But, um, I opened up all three of my Graphos, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start popping back row. Getting my Skarm Search and getting some nice damage. Because I know he has no Necros Monsters in Grave. Then he can't Valk me. And I don't think anyone's going to Valk just the one Trans Archfiend. So the play he decides to make here is he goes for the Gen Malak. And I don't know why he would go for the Gen Lock so early. Even though it, I did search out Tour Guide. That's not the play I make. I go for the play that's going to get me the most damage on board. So like if he draws Solemn, then he can't do anything. If he plays Solemn, that is. Um, and I just go for the plays that get thin my deck more. I didn't want to go into the field spell, just in case I didn't draw into another Dark World monster, and I didn't want to have to rely on him crashing into my Triance Archfiend for me to get my Grapha back. So I end up doing a nice chunk of damage. As he only has Vanities really set, that's a threat. So I'm not entirely worried. He does draw Solemn here. Uh, he then Jin locks me again. Which kind of sucks because now this is the time where I'd want to do the tour guide play. But I can't really do it. And this is where I just start drawing cards. I can't get over his Jin. So I just... I just kind of let him search. He decides to attack my defense monster, which is a really big mistake. Please don't get lulled into this, because I get my Grapha back, and that means I can special summon again because of this. Now, I know he has Velk in his hand, so I'm going to make a play to try and get around Velk. So first I get rid of the Genlock, then I start specialing, I start searching, my favorite combo here, favorite combo, is using Tour Guide to get out Levier, and then Levier to usually grab one of my Snows. I make a point to banish them with my Field Spell. I'll usually go Trans Archfiend, ditch Snow for Snow, play Field Spell, banish Snow for Snow. Which, what it really can do is it can help you have like a pseudo plus one, or like an area in which you can plus because of Trans Archfiend. And getting this playoff is really easy. The Trans Archfiend, Levier, Grapha combo is very easy to pull off. And this is where I know I can win. Because I have drawn a card that lets me be able to special summon my Beige. I decided to search Beige with Snow. I only had uh, like one more target in my deck anyway. So for those of you who don't know, how this chain works. Valk targets your monster, and if it does negate its attack, then your battle phase is ended. But since I used Felgrand's effect on my own Levier, my battle continues because its effect was never its attack was never negated because it is unaffected. The second game I have here, I'm not entirely sure what he was playing against, but it does showcase a lot of the power that Dark World still have. I mean, it might not be against like a higher tier deck, but it's more of 
what it does for the deck is very powerful, regardless. This is a kind of interesting build. I haven't seen gadgets used with the uh, obelisk sniper, etc. And I'm playing the continuous cards, like Fiendish Chain, not only for attack mitigation, but mostly because they stay on the field, so the, the Vanities never dies. And you can keep Vanities alive with your field spell, because it sends it from the hand. It's kind of like why Vanities is good in Bujin. Like, I opened up really, really well here. And he scooped because he realized that he was going to get savaged after that. Surprised more people who play those kinds of decks don't play Battle Theater. They just stick to one engine and they don't really deviate too much. Even though I couldn't get any destruction effect off with Grapha, I still went ahead and went for the plus draw a card because it helped thin my deck early on and I'd rather be able to like hit my snows and stuff and this this search was okay to miss because I'll be able to get it later because I have Trance Arch Beam. Like that's why this card is good is because it makes your field spell be able to plus one even harder because not only does it go to the graveyard then you get your monster and then you banish Trance Arch Beam to ditch that monster and plus from it. As you'll see here, I literally do just that. So it it's like a it's a zero it's effect. You ditch one, which can be seen as an egg. But if you ditch Grapha or something, then you can you can MST while gaining 500 attack. It has so many uses for the deck, and it can hit 23, which is I think is phenomenal. And and being able to play Skarm in this deck is the nuts. Like playing one of Skarm and one of Tour Guide will just further your engine. I know you have a lot of normal summon monsters, but here's the thing. When you have when you have the beige in your hand and you have Trans Archfiend, it's like normal summoning beige anyway. When you have Tour Guide in your hand, it's Levier and you get the plus one. Or it's Fortune Tune and you search for Archfiend Eris and Archfiend Eris helps you get your Trans Archfiend. So because I don't know which version he's playing, I decide to just minus his top card and hope that he hasn't got some hand trap. And obviously he's not trying to take damage right now and then get something spun anyway, because he really can't do the other play so early. So what I did here is I, I called a brow with my Levier to special summon another brow. Even though this might be seen as a neg one, you actually zero from this play because you return that brow for Grafa. So it's you norm you normal summon one and then you get one. And my opponent couldn't take the amount of damage. Plus I had a really stacked hand. This is one of my favorite opens, because not only is Fortune Tune great for defense, but when you have material like uh, Archfiend Eris, it makes your opponent not want to attack it, and then want to attack other things like trans like your actual Trans Archfiend, and attacking Trans Archfiend is a bad idea for them, mostly because of what it does. 
I was really surprised at what he did here, mostly because it doesn't affect me in the slightest. But I didn't want to have my Reckless negated next turn, so I decided to pop it anyway, and then get a little bit of damage off. I was really tempted to chain to it, but I was scared that something was going to happen to me. And I, I guess he just saw where it was going from here. That he had Solar Windjammer and Machine Dupe, and I was just gonna bash into his monster. I could special summon freely because he trap stunned my vanities. I I know a lot of people I've seen when vanities was really big, and when it was at three, people would play trap stun, and they would turn off their vanities essentially, but they'd also turn off all their opponents' back row. So that that was also really good. That's most of my replays I have for now with Dark Worlds. Um, as I said, I think it's a really fun deck that definitely does a lot of work right now. This is a build where I was still playing the one of Barfa, but it's definitely a good version still. Regardless of if you, people think that like Farfa is good or not. I mean, it's bad against Klee, but that's pretty much the only matchup where it's not Okay. Allure of Darkness, another great card. Allure of Darkness is a plus. Well, you draw two to neg two. So normally it would be as a zero, but right now I just plussed because I used Trans Archon. And what I did is I returned a Trans Archon with my other one. So I can always have one in hand. I also have a really, like, savage hand. I understand that. But. Like, anytime you have this on the field for more than, like, two turns, you're probably going to win if you can use it each turn. This is where I think I can draw into multiple Recklesses, so I just start going hard. I was really surprised to see the hand trap there. So, why didn't Book of Moon or do anything else to his Mangeline when he played it? Is because this is a lot more threatening. This has superior OTK potential, so I just want to stop its effect from going off before anything else happens. And I, I didn't even care about his monsters getting the attack. I just... I really don't want this on the field for another turn. This is where I get a little bit of free damage off. Again, that plus one is just ridiculous. I can be at, like, one Reckless and it not even matter. I like the Ice Infusion because it probably helps him get Invoker. Yeah, yeah, he does play the one of Fusionist, so it makes Invoker plays a lot easier. Giga Brilliant, a double Levy Air. This was the most surprising thing when I saw it. I would probably play two Tiramisu as well, just because it's great. It's really, really, really great. Um, like, his extra deck's really decent. Most of his main deck doesn't seem to surprise me too much. I do not like multiple Messenger Lotto, but I do like multiple of Mufle. Mufle is a playmaker. I don't see the uh, TG Werewolf build. I like that a lot better than many other builds where you can use Tanky to get out Bear or TG Werewolf, depending on which version you like. Um, Dragodia and the other are for defense, but honestly, most traps that you're going to play are going to do a lot better. You could probably do like a Chaos Trap Bowl version. I think this is bad, but some people still play it and win with it. So this is probably like one of the most strong tour guide plays, is the Farfa play, because not only can you use like, normally it would be Dante, 
and Farfa's effect, you would always know that you get the Farfa effect. But with this, I get to banish something and special summon my own banished monster. So I get the plus one. And this is where I just draw three cards and win. Because I drew three cards. Like, this is the climb that any Dark World player can tell you about. Where you draw three cards, you use Beige and Grapha, and you just get... A ton of damage on board in one turn because three graphas is an otk if your opponent has one upstart and that's most of the power is right there um a lot of the extra deck i like for this helps me with my otk sorry he keeps pulling up my blaze phoenix because that's the last thing i had selected um heliopolis this is the only deck i run heliopolis in right now mainly because you can't play draco sack and stuff because obviously um its effect is great if you have a bunch of like if you have like a bro a, a beige a trans arch fiend if you have all three in hand or some shit and you're like well i just need to get rid of cards on his board i need to force a response well using graphas is relatively free as long as you're like smart with your resources and um you're not so scared of things like Bottomless Trap Hole or, or effects that banish as much like Trishula sometimes because you can get them back and your field spell also helps you cycle through them. And uh, abusing Grapha is one of the most powerful things about the deck. Like abusing Snow and Grapha. Because what Snow does is it searches for any Dark World card. So I could I could literally just go over here and type in Dark World. And I can search all of these. Besides this, besides that, that's that's bad though. I don't I don't think that this will ever really be that prevalent. I do see Dark World Lightning at one being cool because it's really good for specific instances where your opponent can't like fiendish chain you, and so that so it just gets bopped. If they have set monsters and you know what they are, this can also be really good. Um, some people like to play, like, two Dark World dealings. I think it's always good at three, because you want to see it. Now, like, if you open up with this, you can tell what your opponent's playing early on, and then decide how you're going to play based on that. Field Spell is just fantastic. The first turn you play it, it's like Dark World dealings. It, it zeroes, Dark World dealings, and another Dark World monster, it zeroes, for, like, for how its effect works. You draw one to get an effect to either search or draw or special summon or destroy so it can act as like three three to four different things it can either be a, a net zero or it can net you an effect that is it, it, it makes your opponent technically minus or it makes you minus from your hand or graveyard so if you like if you were playing dad and you were playing field spell and beige you'll be able to really easily set up your graveyard um Gates, I like this card a lot. I am very fond of it. It's not super competitive, but I haven't playtested it as much with Vanities being hit. Um, if I played a more, like, Dark World Monster heavy deck, like if I played maybe, I don't know, like a Gold and a Silva, or if I played, like, Lucent or Rainbow or something, I'd, I'd probably opt to play, like, Silva and Gold, personally. Silva's effect is actually my favorite of the two. But if I did opt to play one of the bigger Dark World monsters, then I would totally play Gateway because it helps it, it opens up more plays in the deck. Especially with uh Grapha being so powerful. You gateway during your opponent's end phase, chain gateway, bring back snow. During your main phase one, snow return for Grapha. So it's it's like it takes longer to do the same play, but it still gives you advantage and sometimes you can just be like during your opponent's turn when they try to battle you you bring back a grapha just because you don't they have something that's weaker than grapha grapha can be 30 under the field spell which is great not a lot of decks pump out monsters that hit for 30 right now i know there's a couple of examples that are really good but i mean i think the, the point is met though is that gateway is still clutch but it can still be really prevalent
And it, it's funny because it says, and but you can set. Like, if you really need to, you can set a monster. <laughs> so, I'll just briefly cover the field spell and why I think it's good. The first turn you play it, as I was saying, Dark World Dealings, it zeroes. Because you ditch one to draw one. And you play it. So, you use a card to get another card. The second turn you play it, you plus one. Because not only have you is it already on the field, and it's activated. Unlike Dark World Dealings, which you would have to play an additional copy of. This, you play it the next turn, and you now ditch one to draw one. So you're, you're net one. The third turn that this thing is activated, you've already drawn two cards while not having to use Dark World Dealings. Dark World Dealings just helps further your speed in the engine. Like, if you draw into both of these and you get your, um, you, you open up, like, Trance, Snow, um, Dealings, Field Spell. If you open up that and any other, like, random card, then you can pretty much win. Because you would go Trance, Archfiend, Effect, Ditch Snow for Snow. Then you would Dark Road Dealings, Snow for Snow. Then you would field spell, ditch snow, and search for bro. And from there, you would have just you would have thinned your deck of all three snows. Then you would have drawn um, two cards in the process, and you don't even have to search for bro. You can search for a second dealings, which is which is my optimal play if you do have the trans archery, because then you always have one snow in banish, and then. If, if they bop your Trans Archfiend, then they're like, oh, so now you have Dark World Dealings and Snow in your hand next turn. Wonder where that's gonna go. And if you keep your Field Spell on board, then you're already at net two. So, um, I know Dark World isn't, like, super top tier, but it its engine is still fluid enough for some people to play ridiculous things. Like, I know when Burning Abyss came out, I saw a couple people do the uh, Burning Abyss engine in Dark Worlds. They played like two of of all the Burning Abyss monsters. Um, I only played Skarm and Farfa for a little bit, but I like Skarm way too much because Skarm searches for five cards, and you have like two really easy ways to get it out of your deck. And you do see Tour Guide relatively easily because you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 cards that just let you draw cards. And um, you do have the triple snow, which is deck thinning. Then you have triple bro, which is draw an additional card. It, it, like These two cards are just nutty with each other. I like I, I like a lot of times to go snow into snow into bro, just because I like to be able to thin my deck of the snows first to banish them, and then I like to be able to draw into back row. You're more likely to draw into non-dark world cards typically, especially because you're thinning your deck of dark world cards. You know, you run the the ten staple dark world monsters, and then you run six of the spells. Um. If I do bring you guys another Dark World deck profile, I promise it's going to be a Cerulee build uh, with a Latinum, Lucent. I might even play Rainbow. I don't know yet. It's That's the deck I originally wanted to play with Dark Worlds because how nutty this thing is. And if you special summon it with Gateway, you get its effect to make your opponent just ditch a card because it's special summoned by the effect of a Dark World card. <laughs> very, very cheeky little combos you can do with this guy. But... Uh, for anything else, just like, comment the video, subscribe to me, send me a personal in, uh, message in my inbox, and I'll get it. I'll, you know, I'll definitely respond to you. Um, let me know what's good. This is Willie G signing out.